What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to change oil in any car. All that coming right up. Now, for this particular video, I'm going to be servicing the 2011 Lexus IS 350. Now, I will honestly say from the start that it kind of defeats the purpose, but the purpose of this video is to show you guys how easy it is to service any car that has an oil filter that is easily accessible via the engine bay. Unlike the Lexus IS 350 I have behind me today, the oil filter is located where the sump plug is. So it, like I said, it kind of defeats the purpose of doing it this way, but I really wanted to show you guys how easy it is to service a car using a simple device like this electronic fluid transfer pump I have right here and basically it speaks for itself it is a fluid transfer pump an electronic fluid transfer pump it basically pulls fluid from one location and puts it into another via hoses so as you can see here I have a hose here and I also have a hose there going into the dipstick of the Lexus what it's going to do is pull oil straight out of the Lexus engine and then transfer it directly into this oil canister right here. I'll give you guys a closer look of this setup in just a second, but I just wanted to explain quickly how this all works. You have your electronic fluid transfer pump right there, and you have a 12 volt battery here that powers the electronic pump, and it runs off a positive and a negative. You just need a 12 volt battery. Of course, you can use your car battery, but I'm just going to use this just to show you guys that it's doable using a 12 volt battery this small and I'm going to transfer it into a different type of oil pump but the reason why I'm using it today is so that I can measure the amount of oil that comes out of the Lexus because I still want to make sure that the Lexus isn't burning uh, more oil than it should be now you also can service it using a manual oil extractor pump like this but I'm going to save that for another video maybe when I service the W203 but for this video, I just really wanted to show you guys how you can do it using a cheap little item like this, which is the electronic fluid transfer pump. Let me show you exactly how it's set up and we'll get straight into it. That's basically how it's set up. I have my oil canister there and then it has a hose that leads to the electronic fluid transfer pump. And then there's your 12 volt battery that powers it, the positive and negative that comes off the electronic fluid transfer pump. and then. There is a little hose that comes off it, the fluid pump, and then it goes directly into the dipstick of the IS350. And that's basically it. You can drain all the oil with little to no fuss. Another thing I wanted to point out with this little device is that you really shouldn't be using it for longer than 30 minutes. Now this is only going to take about 15 minutes and that's it. It has an on and off switch right here. So now we're just going to start transferring the oil. I'm just going to start it. And there we go. All started now, as you can see, the oil is already coming straight out of the hose and into the canister. Now there's a reason why I've chosen to give it a little bit of pour, so that once it pulls the oil out of the engine, it simply rushes straight into the oil canister. So we're going to leave this for about, say, 15 minutes. Another thing about doing it this way is that you don't have to bother about removing you know, any of the covers, anything like that. All you have to worry about is simply getting your tube from your oil extractor pump down the dipstick. Because as we know, dipsticks pretty much go to the, the oil pan of your engine. And if you get it far enough in there, it's basically going to take out all the oil in the engine bay. Now, the Lexus has about 6.1 litres of oil that it takes. So, I'm going to be expecting about 6 litres of oil. Once this finishes, I can get underneath the car, jack it up and uh, take off the uh, oil filter. All you have to do is sit, chill, wait for the oil to all extract and transfer over to your canister or your oil pan, whatever it is you're using to collect oil, and it is that easy. Nothing to it. So I really wanted to show you this guys because it really does save a lot of time and effort and hassle. 
we still want to make sure that the dipstick is all the way in and also don't just walk away unless you have this completely situated in a solid position as it does vibrate so you don't want it to just fall over and just spill oil everywhere but if you do mount it onto say like a, a wooden board or something like that and you have like a table next to the car then you probably won't even have to worry about it you can just walk away for about 15 minutes and then come back another thing is while we're waiting you are going to need the oil filter cap wrench and this will sit over the oil filter so that you can pull it off using a tool like that okay so you know be sure you do have these certain parts before you do this uh, it's very important okay, i have a full kit with every single type of uh, car oil filter cap you don't have to buy that you can simply just buy the one type i think we're pretty much done here guys i'm looking at the tube and there is no more oil coming up just to get the rest of this through here i'm going to turn it on and suck it all down Alrighty. that's it okay so we're going to jack up the car now so we're going to make sure we put a chock behind each wheel so now we're going to get the jack and uh Put it underneath the car i've gone ahead and jacked up the car but i want to show you guys what you need to look for when you're underneath the car okay so you notice where i've jacked it from there and you see that cross member there with the holes through it that's where you want to jack it from now i'm a little bit off but it's going to be fine okay and this here is where you're going to get your oil filter from okay so if you've got one two and three 10 mil screws if you choose to use jack stands that is where you want to use your jack stands on the axles just like i have on this side as well never ever get under a car without jack stands okay that is my rule of thumb just in case god forbid anything ever happens you don't ever want to be underneath the car without jack stands. I'm going to go ahead and remove these three 10 mil screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them, screws or bolts. One more here. And then this flap will remove exposing your oil filter. Now, what we need to do here now, use our Toyota oil cap, put it on top and then crank it off. But before we do that, I just want to show you guys if you are servicing your car underneath here where this cross member is you notice how you come in from the center in the middle off to the left pretty much in line with just in line with your axle you will see your sump plug right there see your sump plug right there that is your sump plug okay so that's what you're going to remove if you want to drain your oil from the oil pan directly using the sun plug we are going to take off the oil filter and see what it shows us got the uh oil cap wrench on there now i've got a uh a ratchet on there lefty loosey righty tidy so i'm going to pull towards me that would loosen it okay okay there we go we're loose now guys yeah we have an oil pan directly underneath our oil I think we're going to undo it and uh see if any oil comes out be able to just undo it by hand and the oil will show come out okay here comes some oil all right we'll let that drip down first it shouldn't be a whole bunch. Alright, that's out. There we go. The rest of the oil. Booyah! See that there? On this, we have one O ring to replace right there. We'll clean off all this excess oil while we let the rest of the oil drip out. And then we remove the oil filter, get rid of that check for any dirt and debris inside your oil filter okay nothing in there everything's all good no problems 
Now we have to remove this o-ring and replace it with a new one. We'll get our pick tool, take off this o-ring. We no longer need that. We will grab our new air filter. In this case, I've got a K&N one. In case you're wondering the part number, that's it there. PS7023. It comes with two O-rings and also this white cap. I'll replace the O-ring first. Depending on the type of oil filter you have and the type of oil filter case, that will also dictate whether or not you use the two O-rings. Always get a little bit of oil and lube the O-ring. This is standard practice, old, new, doesn't really matter. As long as you get a little bit of oil on that O-ring, it's very important, okay? Because if you don't, you have a chance of tearing the O-ring and it will not give you a tight seal. And that's very important. Okay, then we grab our new oil filter and bam, that's it. Now we're ready to reinstall. We'll clean off all this excess oil that dripped everywhere. Make sure we don't leave any oil there whatsoever. Beautiful. Now we can reinstall the oil filter. So I'll grab the oil filter. I've already lubed it, remember? And now we'll just reinstall it. Okay. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. Turn it back on. Grab our ratchet again. Get it on there. And we will tighten. Alright. As you can see, it's snug right now. I can't go any further. All I'm going to do is just give it a little bit more of a push and that's it, like this. That's it. That is already tight. Get some degreaser, clean everything really well. Now we know for a fact that there was no oil spills. We know for a fact that we've cleaned everything really, really well. Take off our oil cap here and uh, we're good to go. Sometimes it's a pain to get off after you've uh, put it on there real tight. And this is how I get it off. There we go. Bang. It's off now. Okay. Line up your screw holes. You got three, ten screws. Start them off by hand. Start them off. Last one. Now that that's in, grab our ratchet and uh, put it back on. Nothing crazy, guys. Just uh, so it's nice and snug and it won't fall off as you drive. There we go. Two on. Last one. Nice and snug, remember, not too tight. You're not trying to over tighten anything here. There we go. And that's it. Oil filter change. Now we just have to fill up 6.1 liters of oil, check our dipstick as we go, and we are done. Now that we are finished underneath the car, we will remove all our tools, our light, everything you no longer need. Double check, make sure you didn't leave anything under there. There's no oil leaks. Okay. All right, so now we'll jack up the car a little bit and then we'll remove our jack stands first. Car's up. Jack stand out. Beautiful. We will now lower the car and pull the jack out. Nice and slow, nice and slow. No need to rush. Okay, there we go. Take that back out. Alrighty, now all we have to do is refill our oil and we are golden.
we'll check our dipstick but first we're going to move our car onto level surface okay Done. Take everything out the engine bay. Check the oil level quickly just to be sure that we are basically there. So, when you're checking your dipstick, you want to make sure that you are no higher than that mark right there. See that top dent right there? You want to make sure where my thumb is right now, you want to make sure you are not above that. Okay, that is your max. Put it back in. All the way down, bring it back up. Okay, you see that oil level right there? See how it's just there? Where it's smudged right now? That was basically just on the top level. So, we know we are pretty much good. However, we do need to go on level surface right now and make sure it is right once we are level. That's what's really important. As you can see right now, the car is on a bit of an incline. We're going to give it a, we're just going to reverse it real quick. And uh, double check one more time. Don't forget to remove your chocks. Pull out the dipstick again. Okay, put it back in, all the way in, pull it out, see where the oil level is? That means it's all good, we have enough oil in the car. The oil level was just below the maximum point, and that's all we need. Okay, well, there you have it, guys. How to service a car the easiest way possible using a cheap electronic fluid transfer pump. Now, remember, guys, like I said, this will be a much easier process if your oil filter is easily accessible in the engine bay. In this case, for the 2011 Lexus IS 350, the oil filter is pretty much where the sun plug is. So that's why you still have to jack up the car in order to change the oil filter. Now, you do want to make sure that you change the oil filter, obviously, if you are going to do an oil change. That is the point. So I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads. Thanks again for watching. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs. Signing off. The service on a 2011 Lexus IS350 F Sport.